I'm JT and I'm back. Sorry, I took a long break because keeping up with this data and the, the challenges of this channel was taking up way too much of my personal life. But now I have slowly but surely over the past couple months automated a ton of stuff. I've refigured some of these uh, metrics and I'm back with a much more streamlined addition to give you the best information that you need in order to make informed purchases on your brakes. So today we're with 2022-23 Upper Deck Allure Hockey and uh, let's just jump right into this. So one of the things I'm not going to do is go over this product like in insane detail like I used to. So you, I'll just scroll through these examples. You can see some of the parallels. Check please looks pretty cool. Uh, and really what this is is kind of like a chrome style upper deck card. So it's kind of like Topps Chrome, maybe Panini Prism. Um, and uh, it's got a really cool look, lots and lots of parallels. And you can expect uh, a different breakdown than normal. Sometimes it's autographs, uh, inserts, and parallels. This one, they put different styles of inserts and parallels in their own categories that they guarantee you per box. So there you go. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a bunch of data. I'm not going to give you information on what to buy. I'm not going to tell you what to buy. I'm just going to give you information. If you make a purchase uh, based on my videos, I hope you succeed, but I'm not responsible for any losses. Just so you know that um, there's going to be just basically the, the key to, to my channel, the key to the data I'm giving you, please, is to just take screenshots. If you miss them, go back. I'll pause, but take screenshots because this is for you to make informed decisions on your break purchases. So uh, Steel City has has a case of Allure listed for $21.49. And so I'm basing this first chart on $21.49, on that, that number. So what I'm showing you here is who has the total number of cards per team and what you should pay if all the cards uh, were the exact same price and you were to buy in the distribution of the, that cost for that team. So if all cards were the were basically exactly the same cost, one cent maybe, uh, and you added them up for that team. It's obviously not one cent because it doesn't make sense. So that's what this is. This is just saying, based on the total number of cards, how much should you pay? So if you wanted the team with the most cards, you go after the Flyers. And some of these, some of this, these print runs are assessed. I didn't, I'm no longer going to spend the hours it used to take to calculate the exact print runs. I got pretty good at it, but I never was able to automate it because there's a lot of things you have to do manual. So I'm making assumptions here based on historical data. And so take this number with a grain of salt. It's not really that the flyers have 5,316. It's just based on my assessed calculations. That's what they have. And I make the same assumptions for all the teams. So that means that this should all be correct, but for all the teams, even if the number's wrong, the distribution should be the same. So if you want to buy the team with the most cards, the, the team that gives you the highest probability of getting cards in general, base cards all the way through autographs, pay about 140 bucks for the Flyers, you should walk away happy. That's a decent number for them. Now, let's just go through, take screenshots. Here's one through 10 for autographs. Here's 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and the last two. So uh, you can also look at the numbers for these other cards, parallels and inserts, but I'm just gonna focus your attentions to keep the video shorter, focus your attention to the total number of cards. Total number of cards uh, by team, uh, and that includes parallels, inserts, and autographs for this product. You got the blue jackets with the most, and you would pay around 115, all things being equal, every card being the exact same price, uh, and everyone in the break sharing the distribution of that 2149 equally pay about 115. So that's uh, 1 through 10, that's 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and the last two teams there. Now, here's where things get really fun. I've changed the way I do this. I used to do the distribution of checklist strength by popularity. I no longer do just popularity, I added in prices. So now I'm scraping websites like eBay and check out my cards in order to get the owner the card owner input on what these cards are valued. So by doing that, I can then assess the team values, the checklist strength by actual ROI, by real dollars, real US dollars. Uh, so I know a lot of you are Canadian watching the hockey videos. These are all in US dollars. So I have, a, I have 
oh, man, I've gathered so much data and I've coded all this. So it's going to be a lot easier to do these videos. Um, so it's one through five. Five is a category where you can have a high, high profitability uh, in your ROI. And one being you probably might not sell those cards or you'll take a loss. So keep that in mind. So this product as a whole has a lot of guys that are in the like two and three range for that ROI. So it's a 2.4 out of five for the autograph specifically. 20% of the autograph checklist is a 405. That means that 80% falls one through three. That's not very good. Uh, the product as a whole with inserts and parallels is a 2.7. So still a lot of subjects that won't return a huge ROI for you, um, but a little above the middle. So what team will return the highest ROI? So what I did was, what I do here is I simulate 20 case breaks. I would use all the metrics that they tell you, how many cards per pack, how many boxes per case, how many parallels and inserts and autographs and everything per box, and I simulate 20 case breaks. And what I'm giving you here is the average return on investment. So basically, how much money per team I would have made if these, uh, on average, if these 20 case breaks were real actually happened so let's sort that by the top so the kraken who i don't seem to have a logo for provided me with 237 dollars on average from each case break and i actually have them listed as the eighth strongest team in the product because there are a lot of subjects in this product that uh fall in a two and a three but when you look at who has a lot of autographs the strength is actually 11 that's not very good but um I, in these 20 case breaks, it seemed like I was getting a lot of low serial number autographs. So does this mean that you should buy the Kraken? Well, I'm not saying you should buy anything. What I'm saying is that this is my average ROI across 20 cases, given data from eBay and check out my cards. If you trust that, then if you buy, the, this is really what it's saying. So keep this in mind. If you were to buy into 20 case breaks, if you bought the Kraken in 20 case breaks, you should average out about $237 in ROI. Now, that also doesn't mean that you're going to sell all the base cards. It doesn't mean that you're going to sell all the low serial number parallels. What it means is that if you were to sell them all, that's what you would make. So look at this chart. This is the full product strength. I think the strongest team in here is the Sabres, even though that gives me a low average ROI. I think you have the highest probability of getting a hit that is profitable, a hit that's in the four or five category. That's what this product strength is. So even though the ROI is lower, the average ROI, I think your probability of getting a better hit is higher, even though that doesn't show through the simulation. So we'll go through this sorted by simulation, sorted by ROI, average return. Here it is. Uh, and then I'll, I can do the same thing for, actually, I'll just go through the teams and you can see what the full product strength is. So here you go with uh, average ROI per case for 20 case breaks, uh, 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and the final team's there. All right, and then you, you should be able to see it based on this. I'll just sort, so 1 through 10, the Sabres, the Rangers, the Leafs, that's your top three. And then the bottom three are the Blues, the Flames, the Lightning. So do you want to avoid those? Probably look at the ROI here. Now I will mention that if you can find the flames for 30 bucks, maybe it's worth it. When you're wondering, is should I buy into this break at the price point that the breaker has it at? Um, well, look at the capitals. The capitals are the 28th strongest checklist based on, they probably have a ton of players in this one through three category, but man, my ROI was like 210, that's pretty good. That's probably because I'm gonna say there was uh, an Ovechkin, um, autograph probably in several cases um, making things a lot higher so uh, that is that and let's go so that's your ROI let's see if there's anything else here uh, no worth checking out that's just all the other types of cards and if you put in the comments that you want to see that type of stuff I'll, I'll, I'll show it in the next video here's the distribution of those tiers that I mentioned so one through five there's obviously way more it's way heavy on the one through three side so Four and five, not so much. There's there's a lot of watered down cards in this product, and that's what that means. So, for the master checklist, this is not including the simulation. This is every single team. Uh, here we go. Number of unique cards. Let's look at this real quickly here by player. So Owen Power has the most unique cards, and I believe Owen Power. Nope, he does not. Uh, Tanner Genot. 
pardon me, I'm not French or Canadian, uh, so I might say that wrong. So he actually has the most cards total. And then all of these guys in this order. So that's 1 through 10. Um, I'll just stay sorted on this. That's 1 through 10, 11 through 20. And I'll just go through a few pages here so you know which players have the most cards in this product. <clears throat> there you go. There's 50. There's the top 50. So that's the players who have the most cards. Now, number of cards per team. This is one that everyone's usually interested in. Does the number of unique cards match the order that the total number of cards are? Uh, sometimes no, and in this case, no. So total number of cards, and you wanna look at this, this might give you the highest probability of walking away with something. This would be good for like kids to follow because kids, while they all wanna hit autos, they probably just want cards, right? So that's one through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and 31 and 32. Now keep in mind, again, that I had made, I made assumptions, so this number might not be fully correct. Uh, but it is, it is um, consistent, if not correct. Number of cards within each print run. Uh, let's just do 1 through 100. Uh, this is um, the total number of cards and the total number of unique cards. So you could see here that there are 1,210 one of ones. That's a lot of one of ones. People like to pretend like one of ones are super rare, but look at there's so many of them. How could they be that rare? Uh, but that's a good chart to go off of to kind of give yourself an idea of the rarity of things. And then we can look at by team. Let's just break it down by total cards out of one. The Blue Jackets, Flyers, Savers, Kings, Coyotes. That's the order here. 1 through 10, 11 through 20. Take screenshots, 21 through 30. And the remaining two of how many one of ones. If you're chasing one of ones, if that's your thing, there you go. That's the order of teams you might want to go in and buy. Um, card types and quantities. So this is just to show you, is there anything that's actually rare? <clears throat> well, like the Allure Quartz Rookies, um, that's an insert set and it's probably 10 cards and there's at least a one of one for all 10 of them. Now there's probably other parallels to that, but <clears throat> that's what it is. So these are the rarest cards in the set. So if you hit an Allure Quartz Rookie out of one, just know that it's probably one of the rarest cards. Check please out of one and photo variations out of one. Well, no, just those top two, quartz rookies and check please. Those are the lowest one of ones that you can get. There's only 10 of them. Now, <clears throat> pardon the uh, throat clearing. Now the simulations. First, I'm going to show you what happened when I simulated uh, 20 cases, and I'm just going to show you the 20th case, and then I'm going to show you metrics for all 20. So in that 20th case, here was the results I got. Let's see what autographs I got. There should be 18 autographs in this product, in this, in one case, per case. There are here, so 18 out of 18. And here's what I got um, in that case. So <clears throat> print runs, let's see, 10 was the lowest print run. Now some of these, um, like 500, 400, 250, those might be assumptions. Oh, no, they're not. Those are the actual... <clears throat> Sorry again. Those are the actual print runs. These blank ones, they're cards that don't have a print run um, listed. So there you go. Those are the, those are the, um, that's what you could expect. Like this quality of autographs from this, from a case break. Um, there we go. Okay. So then uh, for that one case, wh who did I get by team? Well, I got the most Blue Jackets, Savers, Flyers. That might be of interest to you so that you know, like, hey, is the team with the most cards going to give me the most the most cards in a break? Well, that's your answer there, one through uh, the, those two pages there. Okay, I did get two one-of-ones in that case, and they were uh, Cole Caulfield and Seth Jones. They were not um, autos. They were from the base set. They were a parallel in the base set. Okay, and then usually I put the the parallel name but I forgot this time and I've already I'm already many minutes through the video so I'm not going to re-record it and then now notable cards in all in all 20 I did get a bunch of one of ones I actually got 68 one of ones in 20 case breaks that's those are good odds but like I said there's 1200 of them so it's that you actually get pretty good odds not a lot of them were insert cards unfortunately um, a lot of base set one of ones so parallels but then you got the all quartz rookie got the uh, base golden treasure autographs 
let's see, man, 68. That's like the most one of ones I think I've ever seen in a 20 case break simulation. Mostly base parallels. Then check please two of those. And remember, this is 20 case breaks, 20, okay? So it's not all one case break. And then here's all 20 of the case breaks and the, the team ROI, okay, it changes. So you wanna kinda of look at these, I'll scroll slowly through, the names are kinda of messed up. But you wanna see like in this one, the Devils and the Capitals were the two highest and it changes. So there are situations where the case breaks provide a better ROI for other teams. So, you know, it's not always perfect. It's not always what I say here. You know, this one, the Maple Leafs and the Sabres provided the most. So I'll just scroll through, scroll slowly through here and you can kind of get a good feel for which teams often provide a higher ROI. You know, you might want to look at the Kraken because while they're not the highest in all of them, they are high in many of them. So you can do what you want with this information. There it is, take your screenshots and use this to make informed purchases. There you go, that's all 20 case breaks. Okay, now cards by team for all 20. Who did I get the most of? There you go, that's who, that's the order of the most. Here's the order of the least. So avoid teams that don't give you a lot of cards. Here are the breakdowns of one of ones by team. I actually got eight for San Jose, six for the Blackhawks. So teams that didn't have a lot of actual potential in cards or ROI really, it was kind of mid-tier ROI for these, give me a lot of one of ones. So that's kind of cool. So there's your order there of the one of ones. Okay. And then uh, let's see, number of cards by team for each type of card. So for autographs, here's the teams. I got the most autographs of Here's the teams I got the least autographs of. Here's the teams I got the most parallels, which I think is really interesting, and the lowest. And then for inserts, the most and lowest. Okay, there we go. That's it. That's Upper Deck Allure 20, 22, 23. Whoops. And uh, we are all done. So thanks for watching. I'm glad to be back, and I hope you enjoy these videos. Thanks.